Hello and welcome to Jazz Guitar Chord Melody Part 6. Hi, this is Mike Hayes and in this session we'll be looking at how to create chords out of the 7th diminished scale and also how to move the shapes that we already know into different keys. But before we get started, if this is the first video you've seen in the series and you'd like to catch up on the previous sessions, there's a link to the playlist containing all the previous sessions in the description section just below this video. On a daily basis, we generally encounter five or six types of chord categories. Major chords, minor, dominant seventh, half diminished, diminished and augmented. Up to this point, we've seen how to create movement within the major and minor chords, and in today's session, we'll learn how to do the same with the dominant seventh chord. So let's get started. Once again, we will begin with the major sixth diminished scale. And as we've done before, we'll find that by making one change to our major sixth diminished scale, we can open the door to a whole new world of harmonic possibilities. So once again, we begin with the major sixth diminished scale, C, D, E, F, G, A flat, A, B and C. To create the seventh diminished scale, which incidentally is the name that we give to the dominant seventh scale that we're creating today, what we do is we omit the sixth degree of the major sixth scale and we replace it with a flat seventh note. So here's how our new scale would look. The seventh diminished scale includes these notes. C, D, E, F, G, A flat, B flat, B and C. And now here's the harmony created from our new scale. Once more, we see a familiar pattern as various inversions of the C dominant 7th chord are connected by diminished chords. OK, that's the theory. Now it's time to apply all this information to the guitar fingerboard. In our last session, we spoke about the concept of connected learning, where we relate new information to things that we already know. So there's two ways that we can learn these new dominant seventh shapes quickly on the guitar fingerboard. The first way is to have a look at the notes under our fingers in the C sixth chord shapes that we already know. And as we've just discussed, the A note, the sixth note of the major sixth scale, is replaced with a B flat. So if we know where all the A notes are under our fingers in the C sixth shape that we already play, if we simply change that A note, move it up one fret, to a B flat, we'll have the new dominant seventh shapes, the C dominant seventh shapes. Let's have a look at how that would work. And now here's another way that we could learn these C dominant seventh shapes quickly. As mentioned in a previous session, if we take the diminished seventh chord shape and lower any note by one fret, we will create a dominant seventh shape. So in this instance, we're wanting to find the C dominant seventh shapes. So we begin with a C sharp diminished seventh shape on the fingerboard. If we locate the C sharp under our fingers in the diminished shape, lower it by one fret, and then we'll have our C dominant seventh shapes. And now it's time to link these new dominant seventh shapes together with diminished chords. And since you already know the diminished chord shapes, let's practice them. We'll play the exercise four times through.
Now that we have our dominant 7th chord shapes under our fingers, it's time to talk about some of the shaping forces in music. Music is about movement, and you can see the formula on the screen now for movement. Tension and release equals motion. Too much tension or too much release will produce an unsatisfactory musical result. The 5 to 1, or perfect cadence as it is known, is a classic example of tension and release, equaling music motion. Let's take an example of the 5 to 1 cadence in the key of C. That would be G7 moving to C. Now if you take a look at the chord voicings that I have on the screen of a G7 chord, a 3 note G7 chord voicing moving to a 3 note C major chord. With the G7 chord I've omitted the D the fifth of the chord. A dominant seventh chord has a restless, unresolved quality. And if we take a close look at what's going on under our fingers in the chord shapes, we'll see why it has that unresolved quality. And it's caused by the semitones, the semitone movement. If we look at the G seventh, and let's say we thought of it as a, a spring, a tightly coiled spring that wants to resolve and relax. The B note in the G7 chord wants to move up a semitone to the C, and the F note in the G7 wants to move down to resolve to the E in the C chord. If you play those two chords, G7 to C, in the voicings that I've presented here, you'll hear that perfect cadence and that feeling of resolution when you move from the V chord to the one chord. Since we've just learnt the C dominant seventh shapes on the guitar, a good practical application would be to create a perfect cadence. The C dominant seventh chord moving to its one chord. And if we have a look at the circle of fifths, we'll be able to see that the C seventh chord wants to resolve to F. Now what we're going to do is again use some of our connected learning concepts and Use the C6 shapes that we already know and convert them into F6 chord shapes. So again, I'm looking at the C6 chord shapes that we already know and I'm looking at the notes under our fingers. What I'm looking for here is where the tonic note or the root note of the chord is located under our fingers. I'm looking for the position of the tonic note. Continuing our idea of connected learning, what I need to know now is how far do I have to move these C6 chord shapes on the guitar fingerboard? How far do I have to move them so that they become F6 chords? So rather than just show you some F6 chord shapes, I want to show you the process that I'm using so that you can work this out yourself. I'm going to use a keyboard, a piano keyboard. And if I start on the note C and look at how far away the note F is from C, and I'm reading from left to right on the page. So if I check this out, I'll find that there's five semitones C to C sharp, C sharp to D, D to D sharp, D sharp to E, and then E to F. Now that number five becomes our magic number. So if I go back to the guitar fretboard and pick any one of the C6 shapes that I know, and if I move that shape up five frets, that's five semitones, I now will be playing an F6 chord. And you'll find wherever the root note was located under the C6 shape, you should now have an F note in the same position in that chord shape. Now if you find when you're moving these shapes around, that you're running out of guitar fretboard, it's too high to play up on the fretboard, don't forget that the guitar has like a rotating fingerboard. That's the way I think about it. When you get to fret 12, the notes are the same as the open strings. So the concept is still the same. You move the chord shape up five frets to change the C6 into an F6. But if you run out of fingerboard, 
just simply continue around starting back on the first fret. So if the note you wanted to play turned out to be on the 13th fret, instead of trying to play it on the 13th fret, you could go back and play that chord or that note at the first fret. Now that we know the chord shapes for C7 and F6, let's practice a perfect cadence in the key of F. That's C7 moving to F6. I'll play this exercise through twice. Okay, let's have a little bit more fun with the C7th and the perfect cadence idea. In this next example, I'm going to play C7th for two beats, then C-sharp diminished. And this C-sharp diminished will be functioning as a C7 flat 9. And the idea here is to create even more tension. And in turn, this C-sharp diminished will be resolving to an F6th. So I'll be playing two beats on C7, two beats on C-sharp diminished, and then resolving to F6 for four beats. I'll play the exercise through twice. Okay, hopefully that's giving you something new to play and think about. In our next session, we'll be applying all the techniques and the theory that we've learnt so far to a well-known piece of music. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section below the video. And as always, I look forward to seeing you again in the next session. Bye for now.